there are many threats that lurk in the Star Citizen universe. From the hostile void of space, the weird alien worlds, the dark corners of human society itself. However, there is one that lingers over all, no matter the planet or species, a seemingly unstoppable force that consumes and destroys everything in its path. The Vanduul Horde. My name is Paul Shelley, and welcome to Galactic Historian. This is a series where I talk about all things sci-fi and space lore. Before I get started, I'd like to thank y'all for watching these videos. I can't do this without your support, and it means a lot that you've chose to watch this video today. If this is the second time watching one of my videos, thanks for coming back, and maybe think about hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. And for now, let's get started. To understand the Vanduul threat, we need to understand the Vanduul as a species. At their core, the Vanduul are nomadic, broken into hundreds or possibly thousands of groups, varying from a few ships, clans, to massive fleets, hordes. Their society is based on the idea of solidarity. The Vanduul have no real religion, but revere the past Vanduul who've achieved greatness, often great deeds and overcoming adversity. Perhaps because of this, the Vandal seem to primarily be a martial species, dedicated to combat and warfare. As a result, it should be no surprise that at the core identity of the Vandal as a group, the thing that binds them together is both a symbol and a tool of combat. The knife. Blades can be found everywhere in their society, from their main infantry weapon, doubling as a spear, to their ships being designed with blades to ram their opponents, and survive, like the Vanduul Scythe. We also know that the Vanduul separate their males and females, as only males of the species have ever been encountered by humanity. We have also never encountered a Vanduul child, meaning that likely the Vanduul keep their females and young in a different location entirely. Given the individual nature of Vanduul society, there is firm evidence to suggest that to the Vanduul, might makes right most hardened veteran of any cadre likely becoming a leader. In order to show off their prowess, the more a Vandal fights, the less armor they wear. And because they can survive some time in the vacuum of space without vacuum suits, they don't need them to survive the harsh climates they fight in. Thus, the less a Vandal wears, the more glory they seek. A lot of this information was gathered when a Vandal kingship was found floating dead in space in the protected system of Garen around 2943. The 8th Marine Division was called up to secure the ship and found that it had encountered a critical engine issue and flooded it with antimatter radiation, which killed most of the crew. You see, normally as part of the Vandal tradition, if a crew of a ship felt like they were in danger of capture, they would destroy the ship killing themselves in ritual suicide to prevent their technology and themselves from falling into the hands of the enemy. The radiation leak killed many of the crew and prevented the survivors from enacting the self-destruct. While many Vandal were subsequently captured, none survived their interrogation. We do know from the interrogation that the Vandal seem to use bioluminescence as a form of communication, glowing different colors to show their mood or intent. It might also tie into their language, adding more context to the speech. Though there isn't much known at this time, as their written language doesn't seem to correspond with the oral language. The ship was towed to Centauri Road's naval testing station, and was examined thoroughly. There, the ship was given the designation X-12. It was here that we discovered that all Vanduul knives are made from a metal with the same point of origin, but different in manufacture. As a result, it's believed that the Vanduul traveled to the same place at some point in their lives, likely when they reached adulthood, to gather materials and forge their own ceremonial knives. The knives also serve the purpose of being the symbol of the Horde, with the leader's knife serving as a kind of banner. The X-12 had a room which researchers have dubbed the Chapel. There they found elaborate stained glass with images of knives in them. All of the images matched the knife design found on the body of the chieftain. We also learned that the bodies found on the ship were all adult males, but did not share the same mitochondrial DNA. 
This implied that the ship was crewed by individuals of various lineages, and not pure clans as we had previously thought. The theory is that the Vanduul engage in warfare as a means to gather forces, beating rival groups to absorb them into theirs, and grow. This growth would allow them to beat other smaller groups and challenge larger groups, and then grow faster. Thus, the most successful hordes are also the largest. All of this information should highlight just how dangerous the Vanduul are as a threat. Their entire lives are built around war and warfare. From the time they come of age, they are expected to fight and claim individual glory, and are in constant conflict amongst each other, let alone humanity. As a result, we have a species of veteran warriors, who don't just fight well, but seek out conflict to prove themselves to gain status in their society. They also do not function as a single tribe, but various hordes, so beating one doesn't do anything but attract more to prove their worth. But wait, it gets worse. Because on top of all of this, they are not just bloodthirsty barbarians who charge directly into a fight. The largest and oldest of these hordes are commanded by shrewd, calculating commanders. When we first encountered the Vanduul in the Orion system, we were shocked, but as time went on, we became good at predicting their movements and countering them. It is suspected that the raids that occurred early on were from a single, smaller horde, and when they were crushed, others would fill the void. Time after time, the UEE would crush the Vanduul to the point that the UEE began to think of these new aliens as nothing but marauding pirates. They grew complacent in their defense and sent the anchor of the defense fleet, a supercarrier, to deal with an insurrection elsewhere in the Empire. What the UEE didn't know was that all this fighting had drawn the attention of a larger horde, who were watching and waiting for an opening to strike. Unlike the reckless younger bands of warriors, this one knew that their only chance was to strike while their enemy was at their weakest. So when the carrier left, they attacked. While the defenders of Orion held out, it seemed that all the Vandal were doing was wearing them down. So when the UEE Navy felt like victory was in their grasp, a kingship finally arrived, crushing the fleet and chasing the remainder of the human defenders out of the system. This pattern has been repeated over and over again. Raids to probe the defenses of a system, steadily increasing in severity, draining the resources of that system. Then, when the forces are stretched to their limit, a massive invasion begins, topped off by the arrival of a kingship to put the nail in the coffin. In Tiber, the UEE held out for years, thanks to some brilliant hit-and-run tactics by Grand Admiral Pesca Halami. But all it took was one mistake and he found himself surrounded and destroyed when he chose to lead a scouting party to investigate some strange activity, which turned out to be a trap. His successor was not as cautious, and her more straightforward approach ended up significantly weakening the defenders until the UEE had to resort to antimatter bombing Tiber II in an attempt to deny the Vanduul resources. In the end, the UEE was once again outmaneuvered and smashed by a fleet led by a kingship after being drained of resources. Since then, Virgil and Caliban fell in similar ways, though Virgil would fall in weeks and Caliban in days. Not only do the Vanduul know how to beat us, but they're getting better at it. Vega would have been the next to fall if it weren't for Admiral Bishop, who has managed to counter the Vanduul strategies. In fact, Bishop seems like the first admiral since Halamede to realize that the only way to defeat the Fanduul is full-scale total war. His pleas to the Senate to declare war was eventually answered, and thanks to the X-12, we built our own kingship designed to counter the Vanduul, the UES Retribution. When Bishop recognized this same pattern happening in the Oberon system in 2946, he preemptively deployed his forces, now larger and more prepared for Vandal tactics than any fleet the Vandal had fought before. The Battle of Oberon was a fierce one, but thanks to the training and experience of the UEE naval crews, the Vandal horde attacking was not only beaten, but entirely crushed, in a way no other horde of its size had. It is also telling that the kingship did not show up during the battle, 
despite the size of the Vandal forces, likely indicating that the Horde had one in its possession. This means that the kingship truly is only brought in in order to tip the scales of a mostly even fight, and won't risk entering a losing battle and the shame of being destroyed by a superior force. While the battle seems to be slowly turning against the Vanduul, several factors are stacked against the UEE. First, the cost and logistics alone to keep the massive Vandal counterfleets supplied is immense. They also pull forces away from fringe space, where typically the Navy would act to suppress crime. As a result, we are seeing a rise in insurrection and pirate activity, like the Xenothreat assaults on the Stanton system and the aggressive moves of the Ninetales gang against Crusader. Thus, civil strife could pull the Empire apart at the seams before the Vandal can be dealt with. Another issue is that of possible outside support for the Vandal. It was recently brought to my attention that both the Banu and Xi'an have trade relations with the Vandul. Both groups keep their relations incredibly secretive and are tenuous at best. The Banu are very careful around their Vandul trading partners who make up only a handful of hordes, and the Xi'an are strictly business seeing as they view the Vandul as savage barbarians, while the Vandul see the Xi'an as cowards for not wanting to attack directly and preferring to use subterfuge. While in general, the Banu aren't much to be concerned about, as they value their trade with humanity, the tendency for the Xi'an to use diplomacy and third parties to deal with potential rivals and enemies leaves the question open. Are the Xi'an actively supporting the Vandul to keep humanity focused towards an exterior threat? We know that during the first contact, the Xi'an were able to get detailed maps of human space. We also know that the Vandul invaded the UEE through some of the oldest systems we had, systems that were very much on the maps the Xi'an acquired. The fact that they arrived just as the Mezers were beginning their quick decline and even accelerated the fall is convenient to the Xi'an. There is also the long gap in the Vandal invasions between the fall of the Mezers and the current day. The modern invasions just so happened to coincide with the rise in a new xenophobic movement in the UEE, a movement whose power is centered on the older parts of the Empire near the Vandal front. For now, it's just a thought but it isn't too far from the realm of possibility. Regardless, the Vandal are a serious threat to humanity, likely the biggest existential threat we have ever faced in the Star Citizen universe. The next decade might determine if humanity thrives or dies out, and it will likely be up to players like you to decide that fate. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the Vandal threat. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'd like to thank those on screen now who support me on Patreon keep this content going. I'm currently trying to raise enough to hire an editor who can help me increase the quality and quantity of videos coming, including a timed Patreon exclusive where I cover the entire history of the Star Citizen universe. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, think about joining my Patreons for as little as $5 a month. For now, let me know what you think of the Vandul in the comments below. Are they truly a threat or just a challenge humanity can easily overcome? And, as always, remember, Existoria ad Astra.